In this short tutorial, we're going to talk conceptually about DLLs, or Dynamic Link Libraries. Realize that anytime you're working in C++ and download an SDK, it usually comes with one or more DLLs, header files, and lib files. So here what we're going to try to do is to clear up what these things are and how they're related. In real-world projects, you typically don't create something from scratch. Instead, you download an SDK, and that comes with DLLs and headers and lib files. Realize that a DLL is just a compiled set of functions. The main benefits of DLLs is that they're reusable. So for example, you may have a couple of games and a couple of applications that use the same graphics library, and that could be packaged into a DLL. If you want to get an idea about how many DLLs you have on your own system, you might want to look in C Windows System 32. You'll probably find a couple hundred of them. And as I said before, DLLs usually come with header files and lib files. So, what is a header file? These are usually text files that end in a .h extension. All these are is a description of the available functions that you can call. If you want to see an example of a header file, you can look at the image here to the right and see glue.h, and this shows some of the OpenGL functions that we could call. Realize that there's no implementation inside the header file. In fact, if you look at each of these functions, they end in a semicolon. Instead, the implementation resides in the DLL. You've probably worked with the pound include directive before, but realize that if you see double quotes, that means to search locally, and if you see the brackets, that means to search elsewhere. All right, so a lot of people are still mystified by lib files or library files. All this does is relate the header file to the DLL. A lib file is a binary file, and it tells where inside the DLL that we can find the functions. So for example, in the image here, if we pound include a header file, it needs a lib file so that when we compile it, we know where inside the DLL to find functions. And then during runtime, it knows exactly where to look inside that DLL for those functions. All right, the last step that you're probably gonna have to do is to configure your environment, which is probably Visual Studio 2010 or later. You have to tell it a couple of different things. First, you need to tell it where the header files are. After that, you usually tell it where the lib files are, and then finally, you usually tell it which libs it's going to use. Now, if you've done all of that, it'll probably compile, but when you run it, you might see something like the image that you see here in front of you. In this case, it says that it couldn't find one of the functions that we're calling inside the DLL. But that's not really true. Chances are it couldn't find the DLL at all. So the last step is after you've compiled and you try to run it, make sure that the EXE can actually find the DLL. You can do this either by placing it into Windows System 32, or you can copy it into where the actual executable is. So as promised, this was a short tutorial, but hopefully it clarifies a little bit more about DLLs.